Hey there, future office hero. Glowing Star, welcome back to Economists Inn, the place where we make economic indicators not just understandable but downright fun. Today, we're diving into the world of economic indicators, so you'll never have to nod cluelessly in those long, dreary meetings again. Let's turn that Econ 101 snooze fest into something you can actually use. First up, the heavyweight champ of economic indicators, gross domestic product, or GDP. GDP is like the economy's report card. It tells us the total value of all goods and services produced within a country's borders. A growing GDP means good times, more jobs, higher incomes, and possibly more money for that fancy coffee machine in the break room. When you hear the GDP grew by 3% last quarter, that's your cue to smile and nod approvingly. Next, let's talk about the unemployment rate. This one's pretty straightforward. It's the percentage of the labor force that's jobless but actively looking. High unemployment? More people job hunting than job finding. Think of it as economic distress. Low unemployment? A bustling job market. Think of it as economic cheer. So, when someone mentions the latest unemployment stats, you'll know exactly why it matters. Moving on to the inflation rate. Inflation measures how quickly prices for goods and services are rising. If inflation's too high, your money doesn't stretch as far. If it's too low, it might mean the economy's taking a nap. The Federal Reserve aims for a sweet spot around 2% per year. So, next time you're at the store and notice prices creeping up, you can impress your friends by saying, ah, the effects of inflation. Now, let's break down the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. The CPI tracks the average change in prices over time that consumers pay for a basket of goods and services. It's our go-to for measuring inflation. So, if your salary gets a cost of living adjustment, thank the CPI for that extra cash. Let's talk about the Producer Price Index, or PPI. While CPI looks at things from the consumer's angle, PPI looks from the producer's perspective. If the PPI is rising, it means costs for businesses are up, which usually trickles down to higher prices for us consumers. So, keep an eye on the PPI to stay ahead of price hikes. On to interest rates. Interest rates are the cost of borrowing money, set by the Federal Reserve. They influence everything from mortgage rates to savings account interest. Lower rates encourage borrowing and investing, boosting the economy, while higher rates can curb inflation but might slow things down. So, next time you hear about a rate hike, you'll know why it's a big deal. Retail sales, let's shop till we drop, economically speaking. Visual, busy shopping mall. Host, playful tone. Retail sales measure the total receipts of retail stores. Strong retail sales mean confident consumers and a growing economy. Weak sales? Not so great. Consumer spending makes up a big chunk of GDP so this indicator is key. Now, let's build up some knowledge about housing starts. Housing starts track the number of new residential construction projects. High housing starts signal economic growth, creating jobs in construction and related industries. So, when housing starts are up, it's a good sign for the economy. Next, we balance out with the balance of trade. This is the difference between a country's exports and imports. A trade surplus means we're exporting more than we're importing, yes. A trade deficit? Not so much. It might mean we're borrowing more from other countries to keep up. Now, let's dive into stock market indices. Indices like the Dow Jones or the S&P 500 track the performance of specific groups of stocks. Rising markets indicate investor confidence and economic health. Falling markets? Well, let's hope you're not heavily invested. Keep an eye on these as they're the heartbeat of economic sentiment. On to the Consumer Confidence Index, or CCI. The CCI measures how optimistic or pessimistic consumers are about the economy. High confidence means more spending and economic growth. Low confidence? Less spending and a potential slowdown. So, when you hear about rising consumer confidence, it's time to be optimistic. Finally, let's look at the Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI. The PMI surveys purchasing managers in the manufacturing sector. A PMI above 50 indicates expansion, while below 50 indicates contraction. 
It's a leading indicator of economic health, so keep an eye on it for a heads up on what's coming. And there you have it, economic indicators explained with a touch of wit and a lot of clarity. Next time you're in a meeting, you'll be the go-to person for all things economic. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Economists in, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on turning boring economic jargon into something engaging and useful. Thanks for watching, and stay economically savvy.